this is part one of the two part series demo in this one we create a public subnet uh, and then we create a, a, a launch a compute instance in there install a web server on it and then communicate to the web using uh, an internet gateway so pretty straightforward uh, demo uh, hopefully it would give you a sense of how things work with the oci uh, virtual cloud network service so let me jump to the console and until now we have see, we have created a couple of uh, networks within uh, oci uh, in, in the us east region so we're still in the us east region let me create another network as per the um, as per the slide I had, so it's a demo VCN, and I would choose a CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 16 as it was on the slide. Remaining parameters I'm not changing, uh, and I create a virtual cloud network. Now I just created a VCN, there is no subnet, there are no internet gateways, etc. Right? So, first thing I need to do is create a subnet. So, let me go ahead, create a subnet, call it subnet A as it was on the slide. For the CIDR notation, for the CIDR block, I'm going to choose a smaller block out of that 10 slash 16 range, which is 10.0.1.0 slash 24 range. Now, right here, I'll choose the default route table. We just discussed what route tables do. It has routing rules for routing the packets out of the VCN. And subnet access, I would choose a public subnet because I'm going to, to create a host in here um, compute host instance and then I'm going to run a web server in it right so public is fine and then down below I'm going to choose a default security list security lists are uh, nothing but virtual firewalls which determine what kind of traffic can flow in and out of the subnets and the VCN uh, for this discussion we have not really gone gone and discussed what security lists do and what they look like but for now let's just go and and, and create this particular uh, subnet so everything looks good subnet a it's a regional even though it's a multi ad region that's fine the cider block default route table it's a public subnet and then uh, there's a there's a default security list so i i click here and i create a subnet so i just created a simple subnet uh, in a in a in a in a vcn now let me go to the compute section of the console and create an instance uh, in this particular uh, subnet so right now right here i can see i have one running instance and a couple of um, instances that i have terminated so i'll create an instance call it a web server web uh, i can choose different um, operating systems i'll choose oracle linux i'll choose ad1 so multi ad region i'll choose a virtual machine i could choose a bare metal we'll talk about all those in the compute module I'll choose a machine which has one core and right here it's asking me to uh, choose the VCN I just created it's demo VCN and the subnet we just created is was subnet A so that's all perfect now right below I could decide not to assign a public IP address but since it's a web server uh, I want to SSH into it I, I want to install a web server on it so i am okay with keeping uh, uh, a public ip address but in many cases even if it's a web server you might put it behind a load balancer you might not need a public ip address right so it's just a demo so i'm going to assign a public ip address here if you didn't do that you could come back later and you could assign either an ephemeral or a reserved public ip you could do that but i'm going to assign a public ip address here um, there are some other options I'm not going to touch them and right here I have to paste SSH keys now I already have my SSH keys um, uh, which I'm, I'm using um, so I just uh, paste in there uh, and then I can click create here and now my instance uh, would be created it would take few seconds and my instance would be up and running as the instance is coming up there is one thing which I need to do uh, because it's a it's it's a web server and that's creating an internet gateway remember we talked about the internet gateway uh, it takes your traffic in and out of the vcn to the internet uh, so we need to do that and then we need to add a rule for all packets to go to the internet gateway so let me come to the vcn we just created and first things first i need to create an internet gateway you can see there is no internet gateway here so i click here and I provide a name I could say it's Internet Gateway IGW and there my Internet Gateway is created now if I click on route table 
uh, remember I'm using a default route table but there are no rules which are here so let's go ahead and add a rule here so first thing it says is what is my target type remember we talked about these um, four of these gateways internet gateway NAT gateway service gateway and dynamic routing gateway we have not talked about local peering uh, and private IP as destination uh, so let's pick internet gateway as the destination and then it's saying what kind of packets can uh, go to this internet gateway so basically I want to route all packets for all IP addresses to, to this internet gateway so I would choose this destination cider block and now I would choose the internet gateway I just created so rather straightforward really simple right so so now I've created an internet gateway uh, I have added the rule for sending all the packets to the internet gateway uh, to this uh, in, in inside this route table which I'm my, my subnet is using right so hopefully by now my compute instance would be up and running if I come here I can see my web server is up and running uh, it's in the running state right and right here I can see it as a public IP address so I take that public IP address I'm using a Windows subsystem for Linux it's a Windows 10 machine you could be running on Linux or Mac uh, or even on Windows you could use something like git bash so right here I'm going to SSH into this machine and because it's an Oracle Linux uh, instance so my username is OPC and this is the IP address I just um, got the public IP address and right here I'm able to SSH into my instance now let's go ahead and create uh, install uh, a web server here Apache here it shouldn't take a lot of time All right, now another thing which I need to do here is <coughs> is open the port 80 because I'm going to remember I'm going to uh, we install um, Apache here. Uh, uh, so we need to open port 80 on my Linux instance. Otherwise, it would block the traffic to this that port. I would say open port 80, that is TCP. That's great. And then I will just reload it just to make sure. All right. So this part is all done, right? So I installed Apache. I started the, the, the server uh, and then uh, I opened port 80. Now, if I use this IP address, the public IP address, I should be able to go into the browser and bring up the web server. Now, as I'm doing this, you can see that it says connecting and nothing is happening. There's a spinning wheel here and nothing is, is, is happening. So one concept we have not yet talked about is the concept of security list. And as I said earlier, security list are nothing but virtual firewalls, which allow, uh, which decide what kind of traffic is allowed in and out uh, of a subnet and a VCN. So for, for, for this example here, uh, I'm going I was using a default security list now if I click on that and we'll discuss this more in subsequent modules you can see that it has a sense a bunch of ingress and egress rules uh, ingress basically says what kind of traffic is allowed in and you can see that for all IP addresses uh, port 22 is open so from anywhere I can SSH uh, using port 22 uh, and uh, egress you could see that every all kind of traffic is allowed so for all IP addresses for all protocols so by default all traffic is always allowed uh, from the subnet but you could decide to disable this rule right or delete this rule uh, if you don't want that behavior now for ingress incoming I see port 22 is uh, open but other ports are not open there are a couple of rules for uh, ICMP traffic so you could ping etc but there is no rule for port 80 so let's go ahead and change that uh, so first thing I, I do here is cider is fine uh, I want this rule to apply to all IP addresses uh, and my source can be anything 
but my destination is port 80. So this basically says that any kind of traffic coming from anywhere, I don't care every IP address or any IP address going, so coming from any source port, going to port 80 as destination, I want to enable that as incoming. Uh, and and I could also decide about stateful versus stateless. We'll talk about that uh, subsequently. But right now it's a stateful rule, which means if the traffic is coming in, remembers the state, traffic will always be allowed out from port 80. So I don't have to explicitly open that. So I'll click add ingress rule here. And now you would see that uh, my web server, I could bring it up uh, in my browser, right? If I could refresh this, but you could see and I change my homepage, etc. But you could see that uh, I'm able to access my web server. So there's a very simple, uh, quick demo where we uh, uh, created a VCN, uh, we created a public subnet, uh, we, in, we created this compute instance, we installed Apache on it, we created an internet gateway, uh, we also added a rule here using a route table to send traffic uh, from this web server uh, to the internet using the, the internet gateway. And last thing which we don't have uh, these on the slide is we opened the virtual uh, firewall port, uh, port 80, uh, so the web server uh, could uh, could uh, talk to to uh, outside to the internet and 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 back. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, demo. Uh, this is part one of the demo. In part two, we will make it a little bit more advanced, where we create a bastion host uh, and then we uh, create a private uh, subnet, uh, install a, a database server, and uh, using a NAT gateway, try to uh, uh, try to to in, to get some patches to the database server. Thank you.